Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog and today we're going to do a brief history of Ben Riley and Kane to kind of catch everyone up because obviously this summer we're going to get the end of Nick Spencer's Spider-Man run and after that Ben Riley will be returning to the costume as the new Amazing Spider-Man and I'm kind of interested in it even though it's like an old idea that you know they're recycling because that's kind of what Marvel does nowadays. This is one of those old ideas that they're recycling that I might actually have some interest in. So uh, to get prepared for that, but also to kind of give a precursor of who Kane is before we get into Carnage Week, I thought it'd be necessary because the first story we talk about in Carnage Week is actually Minimum Carnage. And we never really gone over Kane too much on the show. We went over Ben Riley a little bit uh, with Spider Carnage and some of those stories, but we never really got into Kane. And so this is going to be a way to get some of his history leading all the way up to the moments of Minimum Carnage and then also tell you a little bit about Ben Riley up to the moment of his death. And we'll cover more Ben Riley stories later on this summer, closer to when the new book comes out from Marvel Comics. So thanks so much and enjoy. We all know the story of Peter Parker, young kid from Queens, raised by his Uncle Ben and Aunt May, and bit by a radioactive spider to become the Amazing Spider-Man. Over the years, Spider-Man has battled the likes of Dr. Octopus, Green Goblin, Big Wheel, and even one of his own professors, Miles Warren, a.k.a. the Jackal. Miles Warren took a creepy interest in Peter Parker's girlfriend, Gwen Stacy, which got so perverse that in the aftermath of Gwen's death, Professor Warren cloned her and kept her clones all to himself. Yeah, like I said, real creep. But his experiments didn't stop there. Professor Warren wanted to ruin the life of the man that he felt was responsible for Gwen's passing. That man was Peter Parker who Professor Warren discovered was also the spectacular Spider-Man. Realizing the man he hated was a superhero, Professor Miles Warren had to evolve himself and his cloning experiments to take down his enemy. This is how Ben Riley and Kane came to be. The first semi-successful clone of Spider-Man was Kane. Upon his awakening, Professor Warren discovered that Kane had flaws. All of the previous attempts at cloning Peter Parker resulted in degeneration, a breakdown of cells in the clone body that led to death by fading to ash. Kane began showing signs of degeneration almost immediately, so the Jackal discarded him and moved on to create his first truly perfect clone of Spider-Man, a man who would later call himself Ben Riley, named after Peter's Uncle Ben's first name and Aunt May's maiden name. Professor Warren captured Spider-Man and had him awaken in a field along with his clone Ben. Neither Spider-Man nor his clone knew who the real Peter Parker actually was, so they fought to the death which was the Jackal's hope. But in the end, the true Peter Parker won, and the clone, Ben, seemingly died, along with Professor Warren, a.k.a. the Jackal. The truth was, the Jackal lived, placing himself in a hibernation chamber in order to survive. Ben lived too, but he woke up thinking that he was the real Peter Parker. Ben went to Peter's house that night only to see that Peter and Mary Jane were together. Unsure of what was happening, Ben put aside his anger and confusion. Instead of smashing in the window and battling Peter, which could result in the injury of Mary Jane or Aunt May, Ben got on a bus and left New York. Kane, believing that Ben was still the real Peter Parker, figured that one day Ben would come back to New York to reclaim his life. Driven insane by the slow degeneration process and developing different powers than the original Spider-Man, Kane decided to dedicate what's left of his life to killing Ben Riley. When that proved too hard to accomplish, Kane moved on to framing Ben for a series of murders since both men shared the same fingerprints. Sadly, Peter Parker also shared those fingerprints, and so began the infamous clone saga. When hearing about Aunt May's health declining, Ben returns to New York City, hoping to slip into the hospital unnoticed, pretending to be Peter, so he could say goodbye to Aunt May. But when Spider-Man are involved, things rarely go to plan. Peter Parker finds Ben sneaking out of the hospital and the two fight, before having to team up to take down a new villain named Judas Traveler, along with some of the killers that he freed from Ravencroft, like Shriek and Carnage. Peter and Ben agree to work together for a while, with Peter keeping his Spider-Man identity and Ben creating the Scarlet Spider persona. Ben's first victory is against Venom, proving that Ben actually has what it takes to be a hero. But soon after, the murders that Kane framed Ben for catch up to Peter Parker, when the detective that's working on the case links the fingerprints to Peter, who is then arrested and goes on trial. The trial does get out of hand when Carnage steps in to act as the judge and battles ensue in the courtroom, leading to Kane's first encounter with Carnage. Of course the villains are all taken down, and Judas Traveler finds out that all the villains learned that Peter Parker was Spider-Man, so he goes around erasing all their memories, 
starting with Carnage. Ben, being an identical copy of Peter, switches places with him so that Peter, as Spider-Man, can get to the truth. He does, and in the end, Peter convinces Kane to do the right thing and confess to the murders. Kane is then locked away, and Ben, posing as Peter, is released. J. Jonah Jameson and the staff of the Daily Bugle all cheer when they find out Peter Parker is innocent. Soon after the trial, the Jackal awakens from his slumber and puts together a new plan to ruin Peter Parker's life and the lives that the clones have built for themselves. With help from a resurrected Norman Osborn, aka the Green Goblin, the test results to see if Ben or Peter is the real deal get switched, showing that Peter is a clone and that Ben was the real Spider-Man all along. This of course is a lie, but Ben and Peter don't know that. Peter lashes out with rage, hits a very pregnant Mary Jane, and flees into the arms of the manipulative Jackal. Kane escapes when he learns of what transpired and teams up with Ben, his enemy, the Scarlet Spider, to fight the Jackal and save Peter in a story called Maximum Clonage, where they learned of other clones of Spider-Man, like the evil Spider Side, who they defeat, but only at the cost of Kane's life. Or so we think. Disappointed in Kane, Jackal still sees potential in his first clone. Jackal then puts Kane in the hibernation pod to save his life. When Kane awakens some time later, Peter has given up the mantle of Spider-Man and handed it over to Ben Riley. After Peter himself struggles with his declining powers and decides that it's probably best to settle down with Mary Jane as they near their child's birth. But happiness can never last long in Spider-Man's life. After the passing of Aunt May, which Ben heartbreakingly couldn't be there for, Mary Jane and Peter lose their child due to complications, and Norman Osborn, the Green Goblin, returns to reveal the truth that Ben is actually the clone and Peter is the genuine article. Peter and Ben battle Norman, but in the end, Ben gives his life so that Peter can live. Before Ben's death, Kane helped Ben take down a tournament called the Great Game, but soon after learned that his degeneration had finally done enough damage. Soon, Kane was going to die too. But once again he lives, willing himself through the degeneration process with the help of his memories of Ben, Jackal, and Peter. As well as the memory of Luis, Kane's former love. In the five years Kane was pursuing Ben Riley, Kane met Luis in Salt Lake City. When Kane learned that Luis was a criminal, he made the impossible choice to kill her. And now her memory was here, saving his life. Over time, Kane helps Peter Parker, who once again is the Amazing Spider-Man, take down a villain named Raptor. In the Grim Hunt story, Kane switches places with a weakened Peter Parker and is killed by the children of Craven the Hunter. Many years earlier, Kane, working as a bounty hunter, battled Craven just before the events of Craven's last hunt, which set everything into motion that led to Craven's suicide. Now Kane was dead, again, and his death was a sacrifice to resurrect Craven the Hunter. But when the children of Craven realized that they killed the clone of Spider-Man instead of the real deal, this Craven resurrected undead, and he had to be killed by the true Peter Parker. In the aftermath, Kane's body is resurrected by the Jackal who gives him a new name and new form as a mutated tarantula. Kane is then used by the Jackal in the Spider Island story to help mutate New York City into an island of spider people for a monstrous queen who is working with the Jackal. As New York City begins to fall, Kane finds his way to Horizon Labs and is cured of his tarantula mutation as well as his degeneration condition. He is now a perfect copy of Spider-Man, but once again with a few slightly different powers. Kane uses his new gifts and teams up with the Avengers to fight and kill the Queen, saving all of New York City in the process. But Kane's story doesn't end there. Now that he is cured and considered a hero, Kane takes one of Peter's newer suits and heads for Mexico, hoping to start a new life. But on the way, Kane gets stuck in Houston, Texas after saving a young girl, which forces him to take up the mantle of his former enemy turned brother, Ben Riley, as the new Scarlet Spider. Ben died a heroic death saving Peter Parker and the citizens of New York, and Kane died heroically too, in order to save Peter, then later went on to save New York as well. Though he struggles with it, there is a hero in Kane. Ben Riley may be gone, for now at least, but his memory lives on through Kane. And now that Kane is out in the world saving people as the new Scarlet Spider, it was only a matter of time before he would cross paths with Venom and Carnage once again. Tune into our next episode for the beginning of our final Carnage week, as we discuss Kane and Agent Venom teaming up to take down Cletus Cassidy and the crossover called Minimum Carnage. And be sure to stay subscribed as well, we'll be making other videos in September that will cover Ben Riley's resurrection and all the events that lead up to him becoming Spider-Man once again. Leave your comments down below if there are any moments that we glazed over in this video that you'd like to discuss more. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and all that fun stuff, and we'll see you in the future. Peace.